The deep state wants you to eat bugs. Yes, really. Stay tuned and I'll tell you more. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Deep State, folks. I'm Alex Newman, your host for the New American Magazine. And uh, we have talked quite a few times, just over the last couple of months, I've done a few episodes on the war on farming, the relationship between the the total attack on our farmers, our ranchers, and the UN's Agenda 2030, the World Economic Forum. Uh, and I promised you uh, in our last episode that I would tell you where this is all going in the weeks and months and years to come. Well. The New American is always so far ahead of the curve. We actually first warned you in 2013 that the UN and the deep state were planning to make you eat bugs. And at the time, we got some pushback. Oh, no, they would never do that. There's no way they're going to get people to eat bugs. Well, uh, I want to go back uh, before we get into what's going on now. I want to go back to our 2013 article. It was called UN colon let them eat bugs. Um, And at the time, the UN Food and Agriculture Organization, uh, totally run by communists at the time and still today, I'll talk about that more. Uh, The current head is an actual member of the communist. Communist Party of China, the former vice minister of agriculture and rural affairs for the most murderous dictatorship in all of human history. That would be the Chinese communist regime. But uh, the UN Food and Agriculture had put out this report uh, touting the alleged benefits of eating insects. They said that uh, this would help us with food security and sustainability and and all kinds of other wonderful, nice things. But uh, this 200 page study, it was called uh, Edible Insects, Future Prospects for Food and Feed Security. Uh, They recognized that. Uh, There are some pretty significant hurdles to getting people to eat bugs, namely that uh, people think bugs are kind of disgusting, especially Western people were not really interested in eating creepy crawlers. Uh, So they do say that it's urgent for people to uh, understand how good food is. They said that insects as food and feed merges an especially relevant issue in the 21st century due to the rising cost of animal protein, food and feed insecurity, environmental pressures, population growth, and increasing demand for protein among the middle classes. Uh, So they say that uh, one of the big solutions uh, is to start eating bugs. Uh, Entomophagy, phagy, whatever it is, uh, that's how you call eating bugs. Uh, And they were promoting it. Uh, They said this would help us uh, save the climate and all kinds of other silly things. Uh, They said that insects are often consumed whole, but can be processed into granular or Paste forms, right? Mmm, cricket sandwich. I can see it now, right? Uh, Delicious. Just kidding. That's disgusting. Uh, And so the UN acknowledges that uh, Western people don't want to eat bugs. They talk about that in the report. Uh, But they say that, don't worry, we can just have uh, tailored media communication strategies and educational programs that address the disgust factor. And and I'll show you what some of those look like, folks. So they're trying to make it cool and trendy and hip. Uh, They talk about using a public relations campaign And they talk about using education to get people to eat the creepy crawlers. Um, And so I'm going to show you some examples of that. They they go on to say in this report, the polarity of views surrounding the practice of entomophagy necessarily requires tailor-made communication approaches for each of the various stakeholders. In the tropics, where it's well-established, media communication strategies should promote edible insects as valuable sources of nutrition to counter the growing westernization of diets. Western societies require tailored media communication strategies and educational programs that address the disgust factor. So, folks, here you have the United Nations paid for by our tax dollars saying these people need to eat bugs and we are going to brainwash them and and use their tax money to convince them that they should eat bugs. Now, where in the world did we approve to be propagandized by the United Nations uh, to eat bugs? Okay, Uh, that's pretty insane, but uh, that is what they say. Anyway, they say they got to change Western attitudes to eating bugs. Uh, They say that Western attitudes are also infecting these uh, people in poor countries, and isn't that terrible? Uh, But if we could just uh, have uh, more bug eating, then uh, that'd be great. They say we need to uh, push this uh, success of education for sustainable development by bringing together all sectors of the education community. And I'm going to show you guys some of these examples. It is simply insane what they're doing. They're targeting our children. Uh, they also say, by the way, that the bugs can eat your sewage. Uh, they can eat the waste produced by humans. And so basically you can eat your own waste in the form of bug Proteins. 
And then they say we need to change the laws, by the way. They say, finally, a clear and comprehensive legal framework at international levels is needed to pave the way for more investment, leading to the full development from the household to the industrial scale of production and international trade in insect products as food and feed sources. All right, folks. Again, this is 2013, okay? And I'm going to show you how all of this happened. If you had been reading the New American Magazine in 2013, you would have already known about this because we would have already told you. But uh, for a lot of people, I think they're just now finding out that they're expected to eat bugs uh, as part of the Great Reset, Green New Deal, New World Order, Build Back Better uh, madness that has infected our ruling classes. Uh, so folks, this is where they're going. Now, I want to show you, I, I just told you what the UN said in 2013. And I want to show you that that is now all coming to fruition, folks. It's happening now as we speak. And bug food will be coming soon to a grocery store near you if it's not there already. So uh, first, I want to show you some of the government propaganda that is being used to normalize and to glamorize the eating of disgusting bugs. Uh, first, let's watch uh, PBS, the tax-funded propaganda service of the U.S. government. Check this out. The future of food is being revolutionized by science as new research helps bring unexpected ingredients to the table. It kind of tastes like shrimp. They have this seafood quality to them. It reminds you of like a Frito or a chip. Just like crunchy and a little oily and a little salty. And they taste like popcorn. A very smushy taste, like a pudding almost. Next up, we're going to watch the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. That's the Canadian government propaganda service. Watch this. These creepy, crawly converts may just have the future of food in the palm of their hands. We're definitely at the cutting edge. Our time has come. Bugs are definitely the future. And they're betting bugs are worth big bucks. Their idea started six months ago in urban slums around the world. Five savvy McGill business students with a social conscience and a vision to feed the world's hungry and compete for a million dollar prize. Mohamed Ashour is hoping to turn his team's idea of bugs into big business. I mean, I don't think we're the first to, uh, to, to, to come up with the idea of, you know, farming insects or anything of that sort. But I definitely think that we're amongst the first to really try to make this into a global, scalable business. For me, I saw insects going in one door and then cash coming out. <laughs> and so it was an instant sell for me. And from there, we, we just scaled the idea. Jacob Zamba builds cricket farms. So this one is a more tricky, like a complicated farm, but I think... Self-enclosed containers that don't take up acres of farmland or loads of feed, just a shelf where they happily munch on last night's leftover fruit and veggies. Crazy or crazy smart? Why are you doing this? It's kind of odd, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> uh, the idea is um, to kind of find a more sustainable way of, more ethical, a more sustainable and more organic way of producing meat. The UN agrees with Jacob. This dish here is kind of a back to kind of Mexican Tex-Mex uh, taste. Those crickets uh, Jacob know. grows often end up being the centerpiece of cricket cocktail hours across North America. Spicy. A novelty snack? Think again. Crickets and other bugs are up to 10 times more efficient in transforming feed into edible meat. Get ready for it. Eating bugs is our future. I'm talking to the people who are interested in sustainable agriculture. I'm talking to the people who are interested in food experiences. I'm talking to people who've got nutritional interests. Meanwhile, the McGill team is still researching. Oh, hello. Andrew Mott's son is on the team. He was so intrigued by their idea, he offered up his Ottawa basement to grow thousands of crickets for them to figure out when the crickets should be harvested. The greatest wait seems to be uh, around uh, 25 days, something like that. Next up, we're going to watch the British Broadcasting Corporation, the BBC. Yes, the British government's propaganda service. Watch this. Mmm, dinner time. Wait, are those grasshoppers? It might look a little gross, but scorpions, whatever that is, yeah, those are worms and grasshoppers are all on the menu to help fight against climate change. Some environmentalists are telling people to consider eating bugs instead of meat to help save the planet. That's because farming insects for food uses less land and water than raising animals like cows, sheep and pigs. Joseph Yun serves up bugs in his restaurant in New York. 
it takes a fraction of the resources to grow a pound of crickets as it does a pound of beef. And so the amount of water it takes, the greenhouse gas emissions that it emits compared to the livestock, the amount of land that's required, the amount of feed that's required, there are so many factors that just lead to, you know, this is kind of smart. But the important question, do they taste nice? As a chef, the most important thing for me when I serve my food is that it tastes delicious. It has to taste good. And so I have to stand behind everything that I serve. So if I taste something and it doesn't taste right, then I'm not gonna serve it. I mean, that never happens, thankfully, but <laughs> how do I take something that people don't perceive as food and make it something so that people will go like, man, I never thought I would want to eat insects, but looking at his food, I, I really want to try it. All righty, folks, are you starting to get the picture here? The governments of the world are peddling this madness with your tax dollars. Even Fox is now normalizing it. Check this out. These are pretty dry. Mm. Oh, good to follow them up with. That's pretty good. A beer. That's not bad. Patrick Crowley buys crickets raised for human consumption from a farm in Louisiana, then bakes them. And then we take those crickets and we mill them down to a flour. A low-fat, protein-dense main ingredient for these energy bars that come in a variety of flavors. Crowley says at first, friends thought he was nuts, but now he's busier than ever. Folks are curious. Especially as they're aware of kind of the unsustainability of our, our current food supply and, and the food systems we have. For example, as a food, insects use up far less water than other sources of protein, like beef. Marianne says first we'll need a culture shift. If I had a, a bug this big crawling on my head, yeah. I, first of all, I would scream bloody murder, but right. I would certainly not eat it. But uh, look at this. It's a little cricket. This is pretty but he's nasty. not moving. So here, I hope your microphone picks this up. I hope oh. your wife is watching. Oh, my God. How was that? Nope, you're not allowed to rinse it down. I got a drink. Fear factor, oh. buddy. <laughs> I, I bet you you could probably get a Riley to eat one of it's these. It's actually pretty nasty. I will, I will say it's pretty nasty. Yeah. All right, folks, even more troubling than marketing this filth and these uh, disgusting, creepy crawlers as food to adults is the promoting of this stuff to children. Now, uh, Debbie DeGroff, she is a wonderful researcher, and she's been uh, investigating the garbage that's appearing in our children's books. Uh, she has uh, an incredible article about this, uh, Coming Soon, A New Diet Plan, and and she goes through a bunch of the children's books that are actually doing this and promoting this. Uh, it is beyond disgusting, folks. And I want to share with you some of what uh, she found. Uh, I mean, it's just stuff that's just so incredibly outrageous. Um, here's uh, one example. I want to show you this one. Uh, it's uh, a book for 8 to 11-year-old children. It's called Eating Bugs as Sustainable Food. This was published in 2019. Uh, and according to Amazon, uh, many people enjoy eating meat, but livestock takes up a lot of land and resources. Bugs take less space, water, and food. They're also more nutritious than meat. Oh, baloney, right? You just make stuff up. Uh, they go on to say, Eating Bugs as Sustainable Food looks at the science behind raising and eating bugs and why eating bugs might help feed more people around the world. Are you getting this, folks? They are targeting your children to normalize the eating of insects. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of these books, folks. I want to show you some of these. We'll put these up on the screen for you. You've got uh, Bugs for Breakfast. Yeah, yummy. That book uh, from 2021 for children ages 9 to 12. Readers will be introduced to the insect specialties and traditions around the globe. They'll discover how nutritious bugs can be and why dining on insects is more environmentally friendly than eating traditional protein sources. Folks, these people aren't kidding. Uh, they also have uh, 13 insect recipes. You've got Diet for a Changing Climate, Food for Thought, published in 2018. Again, saying that we need to eat insects. The United Nations supports a compelling solution to world hunger. Eat insects. Oh, interesting. Uh, they've got all kinds of these things, folks. You've got uh, Eat Bugs, Project Startup, published in 2021. You've got uh, Let's Eat Bugs, uh, 2021, published, uh, is written by uh, Judy Goldman, again, for children ages 8 to 12. 
Then you've got a 2014 book, Let's Eat Bugs by M.K. Grassy. Uh, folks, are you getting this? This is a, a, a propaganda campaign targeting your children to get them to eat bugs. Frankly, I find that disgusting. Okay. Uh, they're also now promoting cockroach milk. Uh, they're claiming it's more healthy than cow milk. Baloney. Okay. No chance am I drinking cockroach milk. And you're probably all thinking that too, right? Who in the world would want to drink cockroach milk? Who in the world would want to eat bugs? Uh, and that's what I think normal people are thinking. But as we showed in our episodes on the war on farming, the deep state is now in the process of destroying our food supply. All over the world, there are uh, efforts to destroy small and medium sized farms ranches. Uh, there are efforts to uh, blow up the food food processing facilities happening uh, all across the country. Bombs, fires, plane crashes, you name it. Um, folks, this is a deliberate campaign. And um, hey, if you're hungry enough and the UN says, hey, there's some real benefits to hunger, right? They ended up taking that piece of garbage down. But uh, yeah, if you're hungry enough, you'll drink cockroach milk. Okay. Uh, now the uh, UN Food and Agriculture Organization, which is uh, one of the organizations in charge of transforming the food supply. Uh, again, it's run by a communist Chinese agent, uh, Ku Dong Yu, um, put in there with uh, the support of communist China. Uh, diplomats actually complained that uh, they were bribed and uh, that they were bullied by the Chinese government to get this guy in there. So they're probably laughing all the way to the bank as they get uh, silly Westerners to eat bugs. Now, the World Economic Forum, um, we've showed you before several times their video on their predictions for 2030, right? Much less meat. And of course, Bill Gates wants you to eat fake Franken food, lab grown meat. But uh, the World Economic Forum is just absolutely right at the heart of this. Uh, here you can see some headlines from the World Economic Forum promoting the eating of bugs. Why we need to give insects the role they deserve in our food systems. How insects positively impact climate change. Good grub. Why we might be eating insects soon. Uh, Europe, insect based food. Mmm, yummy. Okay. Uh, the Meanwhile, the, uh, the world's largest insect production facility, folks, obviously subsidized by tax money because what doo-doo head in their right mind would invest in a bug factory uh, is coming to Decatur, Illinois. Yep. Canada is also getting a big one. And folks, uh, you better start looking at the ingredients list on your foods. Uh, more and more bugs are being snuck into the ingredient list. You can see here uh, some uh, food that has a uh, bug stuff in it. Uh, and I want to show you this little video from the World Economic Forum about um, uh, Europe approving insects for human food, right? You remember where the UN said we got to change the laws and the regulations so that uh, Westerners can eat bugs? Yeah, watch this little video from the World Economic Forum. Yeah, World Economic Forum, folks, for those of you who forgot, that is the Klaus Schwab Great Reset 
fourth industrial revolution center of this global transformation, at least the front groups. Uh, but folks, there are some really important um, uh, health concerns that have been raised about this as well, right? Can humans properly digest bugs? That's an open question right now. There are uh, numerous uh, people who say that there will be problems with that. Also, in 2019, a study was published in the journal PLOS One. Uh, I found it using the uh, National Institutes of Health. It was posted on the federal government's website. Uh, and this is what they said in the abstract. Edible insects are an underestimated reservoir of human and animal parasites. Our research indicates the important role of these insects in the epidemiology of parasites pathogenic to vertebrates, right? That means you. Okay, uh, conducted parasitological examinations suggest that edible insects may be the most important parasite vector for domestic insectivorous animals. Okay, uh, so they're talking about parasites that are going from bugs into animals and of course now that we are eating bugs or we're expected to eat bugs uh you can bet they will go into humans so folks uh this is where they're going right when they talk about the transformation of the food supply they don't mean they're going to make it more efficient or, or more anything they just mean that uh, you cannot be having steak you cannot be having chicken you cannot be having fish you need to eat crickets and larva and meal worms and all the rest of it folks disgusting but this is what the deep state thinks about you right uh, they, they they literally look at you as subhuman filth that will eat bugs if you're told to eat bugs uh, all under the phony guise of saving us from climate change and making the environment more sustainable folks it's a lie it's an absolute lie uh, less land today is used uh, more uh, land in America today is forested than a hundred years ago uh, and that's thanks to incredible advances in agriculture even though we have way more people Folks, there is it would be no problem to feed the people on the planet if governments would get out of the way, right? If governments would stop paying people to uh, stop farming, if governments would stop uh, uh, destroying agriculture, we would have plenty of food for everybody and then plenty left over after that. But that's what they want, folks. That is how disgusting the deep state is, that they will literally have you eating bugs if they get their way. Folks, these people have to be stopped. I'm Alex Newman. This is Behind the Deep State. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time, God bless you all. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe, hit like, hit that little bell so that you'll be notified whenever we post new videos. And also, please make sure to share this video with your friends. Email is a great way to do it. Remember, there are powerful forces working to steal our freedom and destroy our country. We need to work together. Expose those behind the deep state. Otherwise, you can kiss your liberties goodbye.